All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of, well, I don't remember what I was calling it before, but we are going to look at some of your art. Some of you submitted some art. I made a tweet a while ago, a long while ago. This video, I will admit, is long overdue. Let's look at the tweet that I made right now. It's over here somewhere. Here it is. In, on June 19th, look at that, uh, with Twitter for iPhone at 12.35 a.m., I said, reply here with your art here, well, that was kind of redundant, to maybe get it reviewed in an upcoming video. Uh, rules, one piece per person, must be your own creation. Your name, username, at whatever credit you want, must be in the pick. Now, I will say, the first two rules this time didn't seem to be much of a problem. In previous videos I made where I made this, a similar tweet, uh, these first two rules, I guess, well, some people were submitting multiple pieces. I didn't notice that as much this time, but this time, this has always been a problem. Your, your name being in the picture because, uh, I mean, I want to get, I want you to have credit because what I do is I just, I go down and I scroll down and I click on the picture and I right click save, right? If your name isn't in it, like Zane did here, what am I going to do? I don't go through all these and, um, I mean, some people put a lot of little captions and stuff along with each picture, but I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this, I, I saved like 200 pictures and it probably would have taken me a week to uh, say, I mean, okay, maybe I just should have tried harder and I don't know. It would have just make, made it easier on me if everyone would have put their names in the picture. So previously I, previously I didn't include people who didn't put their names in their pictures. This time I'm just gonna throw them in there and I'm sorry if your art shows up and your name isn't in there and you don't get credit, uh, feel free to shout yourself out. You know how in the YouTube comments you can put a little timestamp and give yourself credit? Go ahead and do that. Be like, hey, that's me. Check out my art and, uh, you know, shout yourself out. Give your, Put your little Instagram name in there or your Twitter, your, your Tumblr, whatever. Um, I will admit a lot of these were from uh, a long time ago, all right? So it could be that... Mm, the artist who submitted these pieces, it's their grandchildren that's watching this video now. So just enjoy watching this and looking at your grand your grandparents' art. It's going to be cool. Is the lighting on my face too dramatic, by the way? I really have a lot of lights in here. Lighting is a difficult thing, but I have like one bright one here if you can't tell. I mean, there's also one there and there's like bunch there and there's one anyways let's just start um it's gonna be pretty much a uh, random order i have them all here as you can see there's a lot and uh we're just gonna start in random order all right and let me preface this i know i'm prefacing it with lots of prefaces but we will run into here a number of different styles and types of art and it's inevitable that we will run into some types of art that um maybe are styles that i don't prefer maybe for example drawings of humanoid characters with like cat or fox faces and bushy tails like that's not really something i'm really into but I think we all can admit that there can still be redeeming qualities and there could, there, there can still be artistic merit to those pieces, even if we aren't into humans with, with, uh, fox faces and bushy tails. All right. All right, but let's start here. Uh, this one, it looks like it was fun to do. What I really want to see with this drawing right here is what the other side of this piece of paper looked like. I also think it is interesting how there is this little spot right here where 
it's, or a couple little spots here where it looks like the medium is totally different. Like there's like big bold lines for most of it. And then it's like felt tipped or fine tipped pens for a little feather. Looks like this is a little feather pattern. And then I don't know if that mix up, like was this the last part they did or the first part they did? I feel like maybe they, they did this part first and then they thought this is gonna take forever. Let me just do it all with these big bold lines. But then maybe, maybe not. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to assume. I don't want to assume. All right, here's a good one. This is a really interesting, um, what's going on here? <clears throat> Sorry. I can't be losing my voice already. I'm only on the second drawing. Second piece of art. So is this like a water, some sort of like watercolor wash? And then there's like white lines on top of it. That's a cool effect. I like that. And then I'm really fond of this crumb right here. What do you think? Granola? A, a, a chunk? A crumb from a sandwich, maybe? One of those big, uh, like, crumbs from a piece of coffee cake? I'm thinking, you know how coffee cake has those big crumbs? This is nice to look at, though. I like it. Stippling? I would say maybe you can slow down on the stippling, you know? It's, you can see here even that some of the dots aren't dots. They're lines because the the pen moves. You, you make a dot, you push the pen down, you touch the pen of the paper, you pick it back up again, and then, but you're doing it, you're moving too fast and then the pen moves while it's still on the paper, you know what I'm saying? But if you just slow down a little bit more, it'll just look a little bit more crisp and nice. But, you know, do what you want. I'm not, I'm not your, uh, I'm not your boss. This one's pretty cool. Are these all the same person, do you think? And was... Is this rainbow thing not part of it, or is it part of it? Like, was there just a rainbow going across their desk, and then that's... They put the drawing under it, and they took the picture? Or... Is that... Well, I guess now it's, in a, it's part of the art. Now it's part of the art. It doesn't really matter how or when. The rainbow got there. It's nice though. I don't know about her posture, but it's a cool style. I kind of wish I could draw people like that. Really all it takes is putting a little time and effort or a lot maybe. I don't know how hard it is because I've, I've never gotten there. All right. I will say this hoodie looks comfortable. I I'm a big fan of hoodies. I think this is a digital drawing. I do remember reading the caption on this one when, they, when it was submitted to Twitter, but it looks like it was drawn digitally maybe, and then like some weird filter was put onto it after that. I don't know if I really like like the filter that was put onto it on top of the digital drawing. I could be totally wrong. Like I'm not, I'm no digital drawing expert, but it is, this person obviously is way better at digital drawing than I am. It's except the the glasses aren't really the same roundness. That kind of perplexes me because I feel like this the rest of it is so expertly shaped and crafted. Like this face is so facey, right? Everything around everything else about this seems so perfect, and then the glasses are just kind of. Uh, I mean, maybe they're. I kind of now want glasses where each frame is a different kind of amorphous blob, asymmetrical. I think that could be cool. All right. Got a nice doodle going on here. You know, I, I, this is one of those things where you could say, I'd love to see it when it's done, but it could be totally done right now. The The feeling that you get, like, oh, it feels unfinished, that is a perfectly legit feeling for a piece of art to make you feel. I, feel, I, I think that's a good, you know, art. One of the great things that art can do is make you feel things, and that's a perfectly legitimate feeling for art to make you feel. 
Did I just say the same thing twice in like three different ways? Anyways, um, yeah, it's cool. Oops, I didn't mean to scroll past it, but we'll just move on to the next one. This one feels like a kind of like a weird, uh, like a digital version of a like a stained glass window, maybe or a mosaic. Mosaic. I think that's the word I was looking for. But what's going on here? Someone is cradling someone else, but I can't tell if how many tusks exactly does this being have? Is this like a cloak? This is this is a person cradled, right? And but what is this here? What is this? What's going on beneath the halfway point of this drawing? There's a weird staff. The top half makes a lot more sense than the bottom half to me. I'm not saying that art has to make sense, okay, but our brains yearn for it. And it's sometimes it's good to just sit in front of a piece of art and yearn for sensibility. Sometimes it's way less impactful to walk up to a piece of art, everything immediately makes sense, and then you walk away, and then you never think about the piece of art again. So I'm not saying th this not making sense is bad. I like the colors too. All the geometry. Ryan, got a painting here. Uh, I suppose you could call this a triptych. I would guess this is acrylic. And I think this is just on canvas, but I mean, there are some interesting textures here that, I mean, maybe this does look a little bit wooden, but maybe that's just the textures from it being painted on, but maybe it is wood. I don't know. It looks, yeah, no, I mean, I feel like I'm seeing like wooden patterns in here now, but then there's that bevel on the edge that you usually see with, uh, this, no, this is definitely wood. You can see all sorts of woodiness, right? Anyways, it's got the gradient going across here. It's kind of rainbowy. It's like, yeah, violet, red, pink, purple, some blues and greens to other blues. I don't know. That's the or that's not the order things go in the rainbow, is it? And these two little lines, stricking across it to break things up a little bit. And this dotted line over here, it's pretty satisfying to look at. I bet what happened was there were they put two pieces of tape. They painted everything with this purple color that these lines are. Then they put the tape down and then they painted it black and white. And then they did all this other stuff. And the last thing they did was rip these two pieces of tape off. That's my suspicion. What do you guys think? Mm. This is cool. Now this, this is something I could see myself doing. I think what happened here, I don't know why I'm turning into like a detective for each drawing. I guess because I didn't read, I didn't copy down the, the caption, like uh, everyone, because a lot of people submitted these, like I said, and had a description on Twitter for each one, but I totally disregarded those pretty much. Every now and then I read the descriptions, but I was just going through right-click saving. Um, what I think happened here, and I think you will agree with me, it's a Rorschach. Rorschach? It's an ink blot, right? You pour some ink in one side, fold the piece of paper down the middle, you get a symmetrical ink blot, and then they used a white pen to draw inside. Which is really cool. I kind of want to do that now. That could make a cool video, huh? Thanks for the idea. Whoever you are, person who didn't put their name in the picture and at first it looks completely symmetrical because like a lot of this does look symmetrical but then there's little things you notice that it's it's not symmetrical it's it's not symmetrical but it is balanced like this pattern here it's different than this pattern here and actually the more you look at it the more it's different right all of this is different wow i thought it was like i thought all these designs were mirrored on the other side but Actually, hardly any of them are. It's very cool, though. I like looking at it. You almost want to see what it would look like if more of this was revealed. 
Oh, here's a nice painting. So actually, it's a cool painting of, I mean, it's a combination, right, of painting and got collage in the background. Hmm. What does this say down here? Fuzzy feelings. I can relate. Fuzzy, I've definitely had fuzzy feelings before. Gravity. I can't tell what this says, it's too pixelated. And it might be like upside down or something. Hmm. Well, well constructed face. I'm mm, a lot of respect for people who can render faces like that. I'm trying to figure out what what this is right here. It's like part of a plastic bag being pulled out through a hole in a box or something. I'm not sure though. Very cool. I like it. Oh, this is, this is dense. Incredibly busy cross hatching and patterns. And now, now, of course, of course, the, I think, I think it's more intentional here that this uh, stippling is extremely fast and busy. It gives a little feeling of, uh, like motion, like little dots or almost reminds me of like gnats swirling around. You ever see one of those like clouds of gnats? For some reason there's like clouds of gnats sometimes that just swirl around in a cloud in the air. Just like staying in one spot swirling around. I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it. Yeah, this is uh, it's pretty intense. It's like a giant creepy clown smiley face at the top. Oh, see, look at this. This one has the title at the bottom, has the, the at, scribble something strange. Very nice, scoliosis. Scoliosis is like some, some, well, I don't know if it's a disease, but some disorder where your spine is bent in ways it shouldn't be, right? Which I guess is, makes sense for this drawing. I love it. Hold on a second. I had to close out of something. Um, yeah, the fleshy tones, the, I mean, yeah, so anatomical, but abstract at the same time, right? Is this the heart in the middle? The heart also looks like it's been twisted up and sucked down into a knot in the middle of everything. Let's look closer. I can see the texture of the canvas. Very cool. Mm, we have some burbles by burbles. Very cute. I love those little, the, first of all, I don't know if this, is this black paper or was it white paper that you just poured out about a gallon of ink on? But I love these blue circles. Those are so satisfying. Not to mention the rest of the drawings. Are these real birds? I mean, are they modeled after? I mean, I don't think they're real birds. This one looks like it has a, a weird version of smallpox or something. Like this could be a kiwi. Isn't that a type of bird? This could be a, I mean, this could be a moa, right? Because it was just recently that I read a comment on one of my videos where I called something an ostrich and then someone said, no, that could be a moa. They live in New Zealand. Very, I love the shading and everything though is what I'm saying. The little texture here on the, f is it fur? I feel like birds are supposed to have feathers, but it could be fur. But yeah, I love the, the only color in it is those circles. Very well done. Subtle, but powerful. So there's probably like a word for what type of creature this is, like some sort of dryad or something. These like cherry 
cherry leaves or blossoms up at the end of his I feel like there maybe is some sort of a perspective problem here. Like I don't think his his branch horns are going up at the same direction. Like if this one is correct, then this one here should really be going up back this direction or something. But no, I I totally struggle with this problem also. It's a weird thing making everything fit together correctly in 3D space. That's why most of my drawings are pretty flat, just laid out on a flat piece of paper. Like, like you ever look at um, pictures of knolling? It's like a thing where people spread out everything. Like sometimes it's a Lego set. Sometimes it's all the contents of their toolbox or sometimes it's all the stuff that fits inside a fire truck. That's kind of what I, how I spread out all my, the lines of my drawings sometimes. So I don't have anywhere to, I don't, I, I don't feel like I can critique a lot of these drawings because I'm not, not, I'm not better, you know, I'm not, I'm no expert, but I love the colors though. The blue sky, the clouds. Oh, I want the, I want that blue sky and clouds. I want it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What is going on here? I'm not zooming in on his butt, okay? I'm looking at the, all the words on here. What does this say? Iolantan? Team Taco? Dup Bomb? On his, the back of the waistband of his pants? Wow. He's busted out of his cuffs. He's making a call and doing some sort of crazy roundhouse kick. And he's super happy. Hey, good for him. <laughs> this picture's definitely got some attitude. I like it. And the hair is amazing. I can't can't miss mentioning the hair. The curls, the flow, the light shining on this part of it too. Yeah, the, good job capturing the light shining on stuff. I don't, I don't know about the anatomy of some of this. It's a little off, but it's still exciting. It's still a fun drawing. So, all right, how to enjoy flowers? Step one: don't just smell them. Hold on, there's a siren coming by. Oh, it actually went the other way. It wasn't too loud. Let's zoom in and see what this guy is doing. It looks like, it looks like just what I thought. He is eating the flower. Wait, why is flower called flower? Oh, it's spelled differently, so I shouldn't worry about it too much. He seems like he's making a great mess of it, but usually I think if you were eating flowers, you'd be outside, picking them straight out of the ground, just munching away, so it wouldn't be too much of a problem if he gets them around your mouth or drop some crumbs. If you're eating a flower and some of the flower that you're eating fell on the ground, would you still call them crumbs or just petals? Bits of flower. I like it. Oh. I am the one who guided you this far. All you know and all you feel. Nobody must know my name for nobody would understand. And you kill what you fear. And you fear what you don't understand. I'll have to think about that one. Maybe. Maybe I won't. But the drawing is cool. Cool shapes piled on top of each other. Top of each other. Sharp shapes. Look, we've got sharp shapes mixed in with soft shapes. And... All of them shaded nicely with stippling as they are piled and stacked and tucked into each other. Very cool. Very nice. You forgot some dots right here. Look, just put like, put like 15 more dots right here. 
15 more dots right here, and then it's done. Okay, perfect. Actually, no, I, I don't know. You didn't put the dots, you didn't put the dots right here or right here, but then you did put them on this one right here and right here. And you put them on this one right here and right here. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just nitpicking. It's a wonderful drawing. I like it a lot. I'm, I'm just nitpicking. Don't, don't take it the wrong way. I feel bad about nitpicking when I, I sometimes I finish drawings, and I post them on YouTube and I post them on Instagram, and then I'll come back and then like the next day I'll sit down and look at it and then I'll see like a little, I'll see like a little triangle like this or something or a little section like this that I forgot to color in right. Even though the previous day I had sat there and looked at it for hours and hours and I hadn't noticed that spot I had forgotten to, to finish, you know. So, I don't know, it's just the, it's just the way of the road. The way she goes. All right. This is cool. Really cool style here. I could tell you took your time with this. Nice flowy lines sections of darkness for contrast feeling of kind of haunted goopiness weird broken limbs eyes gazing out at us from the darkness A magical crystal that we will go on an adventure to claim and bring back to craft into a magical staff, of course, that will be imbued with great power. Do you think, do you see these really faint lines right here? Do you think this is like from a pencil sketch beforehand or something on the other side of the paper? I think there's like a pencil sketch beforehand and then uh, this person just, yeah, because look, you can see it goes on, up, around, and then this person just decided not to, like, they just got this far, and they're like, hey, it looks good like this. I don't need to, like, maybe this could have been, like, some windy wisp, like, maybe background stuff or clouds or, it could have been anything. I don't know. It's hard to tell without them inking it. But then they, they drew this part, and maybe they're like, hey, it looks good like this. And I agree. It does look good like this. It's hard to know sometimes, like, when do I stop? When will it be overdrawn? And I think, really, you can only know that by doing a bunch of drawings. And some of them, you will overdraw. And then you'll know from those times, hey, I went too far. Then for the next time, you'll know. All right. Frankenstein's monster in marker. Does it bother any of you that only markers are called markers? They're not the only writing utensil or thing in the world that mark. Pens mark, pencils mark, crayons, uh, uh, you know, um, lipstick. Um, those uh, flags they stick it in the hole at the end of the, I guess some other things are called markers. Those flags that they stick, stick in the hole at the end of uh, golf golf courses, are those also called, that's actually called a hole marker, isn't it? So I guess they're not the only thing called a hole, like, ca called markers. But why did markers end up becoming called markers? I guess someone was using a marker to mark something and they just kept on calling them markers. Sorry, it's just weird. Was that like a etymological wonderings? But yes, I mean, I, actually, this might not even be markers. This could be like a. The more I look at like this, like these washes, this could be this could be watercolor, and then some markers here. This white stuff here definitely looks like marker. This could actually all be some really nice, this is very potent and rich color though. What I'm not seeing that's making me think it's not marker is any sort of uh, marker strokes. I think I'm thinking it could be watercolor. Actually, the more I look at it, I think it's watercolor. 
But I like the style. Very bold. Bright. Exciting. But this part, these lines, I think, are definitely markers like this. You can see this is like a chisel tip marker right here. I don't know. This is definitely a marker. You can see the lines. The, maybe the line work is markers. The line works definitely markers. I'm, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, cool drawing. Oh, it's not working. There we go. All right. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see this person's name. I was blocking it. Drawing on the good old fashioned dot grid paper. For some reason, I kept on saying, I thought. I thought this was like plant related. Like I thought this was a, a flower pot and I thought it was a plant. And then my mind just assumed every, th this is like the first two things I saw in the drawing. These two items, I thought this is a flower pot. And I thought this was a, like some sort of flower. And then my mind just kind of auto filled the rest of it to also be horticulture related. And now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't, the rest of it isn't really. It's funny how I just kind of assumed that. Look, this is obviously a bowl for ramen and all the noodles are falling out and this is a hockey stick and this is um, one of those signs at the side of the road that tells you there's a lane closure, move over one lane. And this is a, this is clearly over here, this is a, the, what do you call it? Like a barrel from, from the inside of a washing machine and they, he popped it out and put it in the drawing, clearly. Very cool. I like the dark black background. I, I do that occasionally. I should do it more, but I don't know. It turned out well here. What is this? This, this being, like, what's the name here at the bottom? Train whistles and art dot tumblr dot com. We've got a flower, we've got several flowers. We've got popcorn on a string. Wrapping around, this is, looks like a, a head of some beast. And then this tortured soul has a third eye. Four wings, maybe it's some sort of angel. Good line work though. Once again, a nice dark background to make the rest of it pop out towards us. Very nice. And, and observe, we have at least two different line weights, which made a big difference here. You see one line weight for all the outlines and then a finer line for all the other details here and the, the hatching and stuff. Good moves. All right, what is this? Some sort of mad scientist laboratory? I think so. Seems to be focused around penguins. Did anyone else ever read that book called Mr. Popper's Penguins? Actually, it might not be uh, just around penguins. Maybe it's just around, I mean, cause this just looks like some other sea animal. And this, I don't know what this thing is. Here's the man himself. Maybe that's the artist. I love this sort of thing, the uh, the cables going around the top. I love drawing just like coils, like tangled cables and stuff. There was a comment, okay, on one of my previous videos where some, one of, on one of the previous videos that was like these, like where I was reviewing video, um, viewer art, where <laughs> the, the person said, alternate title. Peter struggles to find compliments for any art that isn't just like his, which then I thought back. I was like, maybe that is strangely more true than I would like it to be. But maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe I shouldn't admit it, have admitted that, but I do like this thing here. It looks like some crazy instrument that you'd... Have anyone ever watched those vid uh, videos? Uh, was it called? Anna, Anna Music or something? Those videos are like crazy, I mean, cool songs accompanied by crazy animated instruments. That's what that reminds me of in the middle. This is awesome though. Plus it's all like, in, it's 
kind of, yeah, it's definitely in perspective. There's like a vanishing point over here somewhere off to the right and a, another one maybe over here. I don't know. Plus it's in color. I don't know where this light is coming from, but nice. All right. We've got a photograph here. Yes. Photography is art. And I need to take a drink because only 35 minutes in and I'm losing my voice or my throat hurts. Which one of these two people do you think took this photograph? Right? Right or left? I'm not really sure. You think this is like the mirror on like a moped or something? Oh, a motorcycle. I like it though. Cool photograph. I'm gonna guess. Right. I think it was, I think it was this person. If I had to guess, which I do, I'm guessing this person. Or it could, I, sorry, I forgot to give you the option of the door number three. It could have been this person taking the photograph. Okay, you can also guess this person, far right. right. Next picture, please. All right, there we go. Oh. Wow. Now that is a yellow sweater. It's like one of those things you wouldn't think to do, but when they do it, it makes a lot of sense. Like I'm talking about the blue in the hair here. Like when I draw hair, I would never think to just throw a bunch of blue in there. I'm like, okay, brown hair, get the brown colored pencil out. But there's a lot of color in here that isn't brown, but still it doesn't throw me off of thinking this person is a brunette, right? Of course, the rest of this is amazing too. Look at all this doodly stuff exploding out the side of this person's face. So vibrant and rich. Once again, the little white highlights really, really help it out a lot. I think if all these little white lines kind of highlighting all of it weren't there, I mean, it was still a great, but I think they really help it a lot. Great, great choice. Also, the purple, it's like, it's like when people paint portraits of people you're like, okay, they have skin that's like this color, but you don't just mix paint that that's color. There's so many other little, there's like patches and splotches and I don't know. It's just, it's not that intuitive, at least not to me. Uh, they're blowing their nose while... They've got their nose plugged, and then the only way the pressure can come out is through their eye and their ear or something. Is that what's going on here? I don't know. Well, all right, we've got a dragon. Fearsome. After we... Maybe this is the dragon we have to defeat in order to get that crystal, in order to make our mythical staff. Very nice. See, look, look, once again, highlights. It's, you're just drawing where the light is coming from, I guess. You see all these white highlights on here? Really helps. And then on the other side, dark lights, or I guess some people would call them shadows. Really cool patterns going along down the back of this. I like that. I don't really know how you came up with that, but it's it's pretty sweet. Dramatic background too. Oh. A little bit of the background on this one got onto our friend's forehead. Let me get that off for you. I was trying to make like a squeegee sound, but it my throat messed up. 
I think I had a friend who had a sweater like this once. It was very linty. I'm not sure what your goal was with this sweater. It kind of hurts my eyes to look at. In, a, in both a good and a bad way. Like, I can't tell if this was... I don't know. Like I, I, what I'm trying to say is... Maybe it is conceivable that this was your goal for how the sweater should have looked. But also, there is also a possibility that you had a different goal for some other texture and it would have just taken too long. I'm saying that maybe the sweater looks a little rushed. All scribbly, but it's okay. The rest of it looks pretty sweet. Like I love these the hatching and the shading here on the side of this guy's face, right? These look so crisp and nice. And it looks like you used like a, a brush with ink for the hair. That's cool. Several different um, techniques in one image. And I do like the background. I do like the background, that's sweet. All right, here we have a cool drawing. I've actually not seen this type of pen before. I assume this is some kind of uh, fine liner, art line drawing system. Ooh, it's a drawing system. Let me guess, uh, it's a pen. It's a little hoity-toity, don't you think, to call your pen a drawing system? It's nice though, we've got some stippling, surrounding, some kind of abstract wiggles on the inside. For some reason, this, uh, you yep. know, I was about to say, for some reason, it reminds me of a TIE fighter, but it's these lines here. It kind of reminds me of the front glass in the front of the front cockpit of a TIE fighter. Pretty cool, though. I think this, I, w I could um, guess maybe this is supposed to be a, like a weird abstract eye. Mayhaps. Maybe. I'll go for that. Pretty cool. Oh, this is a, well, I don't know exactly what type of bird it is. Have to check my Audubon Society book. But this is digital, right? I think it is digital. And is it is it like grimacing or growling? Or is that just its normal resting face? I like these uh, vertical lines here, here, and around the back. Pretty much just the whole, oops, the whole swoop and swirl of its neck accentuated by these little, these little doodles on the inside. Pretty sweet. Yeah. I like it. It's just... It's just like a, you know, it's like these things I just kind of call eye candy. You know, it's just satisfying to run my eyes over it. You know, sometimes in real life, I mean, this, all right, this is real life, but sometimes you just find some texture in life that it's just like nice to run your fingers over. It just feels nice. I feel like this is just kind of the same thing for my eyes. It's just nice to start here and just run my eyes up and down the neck, right? All right, here. All right, so this... <laughs> I said one drawing. This is about 20. It's all right though. It's uh, it somehow got it on one piece of paper with glue, it looks like. It's all right, we'll let it slide. They are very, some of these are very small drawings it looks like, but it's pretty cool. I see, hey, I see ginkgo leaves. I see plants from where the wild things are, perhaps. I feel like maybe I'm looking at this one sideways as you can maybe tell by the posture of my head. But maybe not. Maybe they just grow this way. Lots of detail and cross-hatching in here. It's like a garden of wonders. I can't tell if I would like to be in the midst of all this or not. Actually, I don't think so. I'd rather look. This almost looks like it could be a very busy, crazy wallpaper in some sort of lounge. Just looking at these little post-it note size doodles. Even these are not, even these are built up of even smaller pieces. You see this, like this is one thing here. This is another smaller piece. 
Like they're all chopped up. This is a rectangle. This is a tiny rectangle. They're all kind of amalgamations. Tons more little tiny rectangles here. It's kind of cool to make little rectangles and then chop them together. Like maybe this one's not done yet and he's gonna, or this person's gonna find one of these and stick it in here. Here's a little like raven head. Diagonals. Pretty cool. It's like a, I don't know if I walked in on something almost. Like someone's working on a project and they have all the pieces laid out. Interesting. That's cool. As long as I don't look too much at the thumb, it's awesome. Sorry, I shouldn't have said anything about the thumb. No, it, it's way better than I could have done. It's great. I love the colors. Um, I don't know. Trying to figure out if this, I think it might be oil. Oil paints? I'm, I don't have a good eye for if it's oil or acrylics, to be honest. I just, sometimes I just don't know. This person is obviously very skilled. I love just how convincingly squished that orange is. How juicy it looks. I want to squish it. I want the juice to dribble down my arms like that. And that green circle back there. That's sweet. There's something about those nails too. That I like a lot, I mean. All right. Another nice... A uh, cheerful drawing here. Really fun and happy. This is just really, really cool. Six, six, six. That's pro uh, that's that's probably like the you know like their birth you know like this is like they're born like June sixth, and then they're they're gonna turn sixth. Or something. It's the number of days until their their birthday, or this is when their daughter was born. I, you know, that's probably the, the only significance of this number. And and then uh, the skull has goat horns, and uh, there's a pentacle behind them of some sort. It's probably all very innocent and uh, tame. It's just so, um, it's just all radiating from the middle. He's in danger of biting his own tongue off is the main problem I'm seeing here. Forked tongue, I might add. Uncle Yeehaw drew this one. And it's pretty sweet. My favorite parts of this right off the bat are, I think, these weird gnarly hands because I think I would enjoy drawing these lines that are just kind of, they kind of go in the same direction. They kind of go with each other, but they've got slightly different ideas. They've each got their own wiggly identity, but they're working together, right? Also, oh, there's little faces hidden right here. That's kind of creepy. I like the darkness here. Some of this hatching is darker. Some of it's lighter. There's like... Something slashed it and ripped it open. There's, there's a gnat. Do the gnats come? Because I mentioned gnats. Do they have scouts? Lots. Of, the more I look, the more like weird little faces and stuff I see. Of course, there's a face here. A bunch of crazy horns. Nice. does bother me a little bit but that these lines go outside of the lines but I think that's just a, a consequence of drawing quickly and sometimes you do just need to draw quickly one because it's it's more fun that way hey and if it's more fun to draw whichever way you're drawing just do it because 
it's not good to draw a way that's less fun because then you're less likely to draw and it's just better to draw than not draw. Don't make it less fun for yourself. Don't, don't turn drawing into a chore. If it, if it looks a little sloppier, that's okay. Just draw. I remember when I saved this one off Twitter, it was also posted with a photograph, which this is based off of. So it's pretty cool. I think it, I think it was like a, a night sky, which is challenging to draw. I don't know if they got the idea of a night sky um, through with this drawing. I think maybe a, an idea of a sky. I guess that does kind of look like a moon, but it doesn't really look like nighttime, which is okay. I do really like these lines. I, I mean, wiggly, wiggly lines like these are incredibly abundant in nature incredibly abundant and I love drawing wiggly lines like these. It's rare to find nice little circles like these in nature. Maybe not super rare, but I mean, you see it maybe with the moon, water droplets. It's mostly wiggly lines, which there are plenty of in this drawing. Very cool. I think this is digital. I think this person said that this is concept art for a video game, perhaps. I could be wrong. Pretty cool. I just a second, I need more water. I'm gonna admit it looks a little bit lifeless that's the first thing that came to my mind also there's no power lines on the power poles but i do love the colors and i love these like textures you've used like this is you didn't just lay down a flat black for the road or you didn't just you know use a paint bucket tool with a color for these buildings you there's like little there's like weird spackle or something here it's like almost like a heather blue or something it's pretty cool like i mean it's i don't i don't know really know how concept art works or what your goal was right i wasn't really talked through the whole process of what you were trying to achieve here but also this could work you know where where is this is this bamf for something i love those huge mountains in the background pretty sick oops skipping ahead there this has happened to me before i don't know if this guy is at the beach like i was it's a weird feeling when he's you're walking through the beach at the beach sometimes it's just on the the sand or sometimes it's in shallow water but something under you under your foot starts to move or pinches you and that's about the same result Usually I don't jump straight up. I usually kind of try to jet forward because if you jump straight up, I guess he's not going straight up. He's kind of going at a, maybe is this like a 70 degree angle. Basically you don't want to land down on top of the thing that's giving you problems in the first place. This is a cool style though, really fun. Like, it's not anatomically correct. Like, obviously, we don't have perfectly square knees and thighs and stuff like this. But you can, you know this person has, has some anatomical knowledge. Because if I tried this, this person would look, it would look so much more off, right? Like, you've kind of got to learn the rules before you break them, as people say. So, it's pretty sweet. I like it. And I like this, just like the... Like the style of like the shading here and stuff like that. The pink hair. The hat popping off. This this yellow circle. Really cool. Alright, another portrait. Digital. I think. Yes. I don't know why I suspected that. Is there something? Is there something in your eye? It looks good. 
I think probably if I was going to do a drawing like this, the most difficult part of it for me would definitely be the hand. Anyone else? Yes. What's wrong with the eye though? Is there significance to one eye being closed? Also, I, I am just mildly bothered by the fact that I feel like a lot of time was spent on the face, which is good, but I feel like if the hair had like 10 to 20% more detail, it would feel right. It just feels like, I know I keep saying unfinished. I feel, in one sense, I don't like doing these videos because I say things like that, like it feels unfinished. And then people are like, that's what I meant, or it's perfect. I wanted it to feel unfinished, whatever. I don't like telling people what to do with their art, but hey, that's what, I'll just say what I think. It feels unfinished to me, but, and then, then you're perfectly allowed to have your own opinion and we can both be the same amount of right, you know? Oops, how did I, oh, there we go. Um, also, there's like a weird, like white line around the hands. So. It's a good portrait though. I like it. Good job. Some sort of uh, fairy. Is this Tinkerbell's weird cousin. What, I, I was looking at, I was looking at this. Is this like a knife she's holding? For some reason that's what popped into my head. She's sitting on a, a, t a toadstool. Is that the name for that? She's sitting on a mushroom. Now this is cool. At first I thought like her eyes were the only color in the drawing, but now that I look at it more, I don't think it is. There actually might be some very subtle color in her wings, like a very light pink gray, but then there is some more color down here, peeking out from underneath of her. And then there's these nice little shadows. I like the brush you chose here also, actually. It's kind of a little bit, just a little bit grungy. Yeah. Actually, that looks like it was really satisfying to draw. Like I like, I kind of want to use a brush like that now. Not that I do much, uh, much digital work, but now the more that I look at look at this, yeah, these wings definitely look pink. Of course, a lot of that could really determine a lot, you know, based on which, like your monitor or phone or the settings you're using to watch this. All right, some more light pinks. This is a a, um, a gorgon flower beast. It has hands on the ends of its antlers. I do like this. Uh, the, the reframing going on here, especially this part where I didn't notice this until just now the, the antler goes out of the picture and back into the frame here. There's like, there's frames. There's like an invisible frame here, pink. And then it's a little bit more brown on this side. It's actually a flower of course, but, and there's also like we saw before, a variation in line weight. Very good. Sometimes, yeah, the, yeah. It's real. I really do like these frames, the the crisp lines. But then you know, like the antler things come out of the frame, but then these flower petals don't. So it gives it kind of a three D feeling. Different layers and levels of of the drawing. And even these are, even though these hands are just on the ends of the antlers, they're very well very well drawn. Here we have a tentacle eyeball monster gazing out at us from a... At first I thought this was supposed to be a glass jar because I feel like it's kind of shiny. It's rendered like it's supposed to be shiny like one, but then we can't see through it at all. We can't see any of the stuff inside it. Maybe it's just supposed to be 
porcelain or something, but then I don't know. I would think it would be whiter, whiter. Is it cool? I was, I was thinking about doing this earlier. I was thinking sometime I should try drawing on off white paper, like gray or brown paper like they're doing here. So you can, you can draw, you draw your, the, the paper is automatically the mid tones, right? And you can draw your shadows and then you can use a, like a white pencil or something to do your, your, your light, your highlights. It's a, it's a really cool effect. I don't feel like, like the top of this bottle does feel like it's in a bit of, the, the top of the bottle and the rest of the, the body of the bottle don't feel like they're the same perspective. The bottle feels kind of flat and the top of the bottle doesn't feel flat. I've had the same problems. And I think that drawing this, this kind of waffle pattern in a way so that it would be wrapped around like a 3D bottle would be very challenging. I don't know how I would really do that either. Maybe you'd have to really plan it out. You'd have to draw like guidelines to go through these joints. I, at least that's what I would do. Because right now, see how this line curves like this? Right now, this line going through these joints is completely straight, which makes it seem flat. Right, so this line should really curve down like this, but it goes straight, straight through. That's my only cr critique of this, really. It would be challenging. It would probably take way longer to draw it. It looks cool, okay? That's just, that's all. I mean, you've got like these subtle shadows from the, the tentacles, or they almost look like earthworms hanging down and everything, so really good job. Right, kid. Oh, this guy has the uh, the same pattern that that the, the same uh, star thing that that other guy, the skull guy, did with the horns on his head. Except his is not his is right side up. The other guy's was upside down. What's the significance of that? A couple of cool piercings. Is this a triangle tattoo on his lip, or is that just part of uh, the little thing that we all have on our lips right here? I guess I. If you look right here at me, it kind of looks like I have a triangle above my lip here, so maybe that's just all that's going on right there. Just a way to kind of summarize the lip area. He looks cool. Once again, a hoodie. Looks comfortable. He's just chilling. Third eye. Is that what that is? Looks like markers, right? I have had this problem before. I see the pain of what you ran into here. You did your line art and then you started drawing and your markers started smearing your line art. Isn't that what happened here? That sucks. I'm sorry. That's awful. I feel bad for you. Hey, I don't know what to do next time. Maybe do all the dots after. Are these supposed to be freckles? And what's this? Is this like a bald spot? Oh, is this supposed to be like a Skrillex haircut? Where like it all flops down this side and you're actually bald on one side or two sides. I don't know how many sides you're supposed to be bald on these days. Uh, I like the, the doodle background too, though. Nice. I'll be right back. Water bottle's empty. All right, all right, I'm back. I I got more water, I went to the bathroom. I, I picked my nose for a bit, we're ready to go. I think the comment on this one said, this is a drawing in, drawing of a room in Japan. And this is, this is a drawing of his his son drawing a drawing of someone drawing pretty cool and this is um this is from my neighbor Totoro it's a cool drawing though this is a pretty this is like um you see this sometimes it's like sketches of indoor environments you know and it's a good I think it's a good way to practice like perspective 
You get your vanishing point, which in this drawing is like right here. All the all these lines are pointing right here, right? Every rung of the ladder pointing right here. Very well done. Now, if we could only see the, the drawing that the kid drew, it would be complete. What we got here? The laundry basket, the Jansport, air conditioning unit. That's a nice one. Really cool drawing. I like that. Mm. It's kind of a, I mean, right away it kind of hits you powerfully before you even realize what's going on there, huh? First of all, I think I already mentioned before in this video how difficult hands are for a lot of people, me included, and they look really good here. I think years ago on my YouTube channel, I made a video like drawing a hundred hands, and I don't think I practiced them in the most useful way possible, but I felt myself making progress, and I was drawing the hands better and better, but I still was not that great at drawing hands after, even after drawing a hundred of them. I think you probably need to draw like a thousand or 5,000 or more of them before you're really good. I don't know how many hands this person has drawn. Maybe they are just really good at them. I love this stippling though. Oops, wrong button. I like how there's like the different levels of shading. There's like the dark, sh dark stippling here, the lighter stippling, the same darkness here. See the light, the dark. Two distinct levels of stippling. Instead of what I usually do is the, the gradation. It gradually changes from dark to light. But now here is just like there's a distinct line here, which is a cool style. And of course, the subject of the art is also interesting. Some sort of mysterious puppeteer playing with this poor soul, dangling. And do whatever he wants with this person, I guess. Ominous. Pretty crazy. I think this person said they painted this and then edited it afterwards with an app. And if, if they had... Actually, no, actually now that they say this, I see the digital part. It's a cool combination of traditional and digital, I think. You see they painted it and then they started adding like little accents like these lines I think are digital here, here, here. <laughs> a couple of dots for the eyes. And then actually more that I look at it, I see more and more digital additions around the hair. A lot of the background here maybe. And of course <laughs> this funny little light bulb. I'm really, I'm really, really okay with that combination of, of mediums. It's kind of like they just, they just kept painting, but they just switched mediums in the middle from, from like acrylic or whatever they're using to Photoshop or whatever they switched to or Picardo or whatever, you know, but they didn't, they didn't change what they were doing. They just changed what they were doing it with. I kind of like that. Very interesting. I like how it turned out too. This face is very, I like that. Whatever it is, whatever's going on here, the title No Recess makes me think it's some main teacher giving them time out or something, but maybe it's their mom homeschooling them. That would make it a little more personal, maybe. I like this painting though. Hmm. Talk about digital. This is got some pixel art here. Take. Where there are supposed to be eyes, we have only blobby gills. Where there's supposed to be a tongue, we have 12 tongues. And these fingernails are very well drawn, but they make me uncomfortable. The arm, wonderfully blobby, a la Michelin man. Nice shading. Ch -ch 
really cool. I like looking at it. That's really the main thing I want to say is I like looking at it. <laughs> it's a high compliment, okay? It is. How the, some of these lines turn into dotted lines is a good subtle effect there. You don't just, not just drawing a line start to stop as lines, but they don't always have to be continuous, right? Nice. I can't, I can't, where's the next picture? Oh, here it is, okay. Huh. Huh. It looks like some sort of dog or wolf head, but it looks almost reversible. Like it has not a top and a bottom, but a top and a top. It's got two sets of bicuspids or canines or I don't know. Where's the dentist in, in, in the comments that can tell me what these teeth are called? But then it also has them on the bottom here. I love these little dots, these little line dots. <laughs> can I call them that? <laughs> the very short lines for shading right here. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Help me. My voice, my throat, dying. Is this supposed to be a halo at the top, do you think? I like this drawing. It's making me wonder about things, right? I love that feeling. I'm not just confused. I don't I don't know if I like being confused by drawings, but I like wondering. Yes. Yes. Very nice. This really surprised me for some reason. Maybe it was just be the contrast of switching from this one to this one, but it like felt like it was like popping out of the monitor at me. Isn't there some famous artist that puts these an X like this in the as irises? Who am I thinking of? This is cool though. Is this supposed to be a mask? Is this COVID art? Very nice and colorful though. This is a cool style. I like the, like you have these, all, all these little like specks and effects like this, this line here, and then like another little dot, and but then another one that goes with it in a slightly different color. Like you've got the variety, one, sh one size, but then you change the size, and then you change the size and the color. Then you do the same thing here, right? One size, change the size, change the size and the color. So it's kind of, it all kind of goes. Very cool. I'm suddenly getting very hungry. It just hit me like a, like a truck. Just, I said it right when I felt it. It was not gradual. That's weird. I like the pink background too. I feel like these two could be related. Like these two? I almost want them to be the same person, just in different dimensions. Do you guys see it? They're both a little bit like weird and wacky, right? Anyways, it's a cool style. I like the, this is what their eyes looked like in the jungle book when they were being hypnotized by that snake. You guys remember that? The hair is super cool though here. This is a totally different way of seeing hair drawn that I'm not sure I've uh, really been familiar with, but it looks awesome. I'm gonna have to try that sometime. That looks awesome. Oh, and the background, that really cinches it. I like that a lot. It's like she's extra hypnotized. She's falling back into into the emptiness, the nothingness, the everythingness. Ugh. It's tr it's pretty trippy drawing. Sometimes it's hard to make a trippy drawing like this without adding like a bunch of like, you know, like crazy colors or giving her a third eye or three heads or, you know, I don't know, but it's, I like this a lot. Oh, all right. We've seen a, a, a piece like this before in the sense that it's a, it's a combination of paint and collage. And I also like this one a lot. It looks like 
Three people in warm winter clothing, standing in a snowy winter scene with a beautiful, I'm, you know, I still haven't figured out if there's a scientific way to tell if what you're looking at in a situation like this is a sunrise or a sunset. I guess you'd have to know which direction you're looking or what time it is, but I just don't know. I'm going to guess it's a sunset. It's a pretty sky, though. I really like the addition of the those characters via collage. Super cool to look at. It's pretty. Got some nice watery blobs here. Once again, the the white highlights here really knock it out of the park. But this time, they're not drawn in afterwards. They're intentionally added at the same time, which I think is really cool. Until they drew it here, they stopped drawing the line, they come came back and, and, and curved around, you know, added these highlights as they did it. It's a little bit of forethought there. Now I wonder... Did they do the did they do the blue first or the purple outlines first? Well, they wouldn't have been outlines at the time. Hmm. I think they did the blue first. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's really nice though. I like how the 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 blobs, the spheres, the the goop, it looks smooth even though it's got it's full of pretty much like grids. It's full of a grid, but it's the grids curve around everything nicely, right? 06 06 2020. That's a fun way to add the date to it. I like that. Oof. Okay, it looks like this one has been mirrored down the middle. So I used to do that to more of my drawings. I should probably do that more. It's a really cool effect. Just take a drawing and put it in Photoshop or something. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use another program. There are a lot of free things you can use to do that. Probably tons of apps on your phone that can do it. Excuse me, but, you know, on your computer, probably use GIMP or... Oh, sorry. Inkscape. This looks cool though. It's just dark. I don't know what the the heck's up with this big L. It's not a bad thing. It's just that's like the only recognizable figure or shape and symbol that keep, that keeps popping out to me. And my mind keeps trying to see if it can identify like a face or something here in the middle but it like almost is like maybe this is like a nose maybe this is a mouth but not quite maybe this is your eyes here somewhere i'm not sure not quite i don't know could be i like how this turned out though okay okay we, look, look. we got someone drawing a mural on their wall what did they write here in the middle explore Combine? Is that what that says? Make. Where's the markers they used? Is it over here? Or is it... Do they use brushes for all this? I'm not sure. At uh, first I assumed it must have been markers, but... I think they used brushes. Say these tubes of paint right here. I think they used that to color in these areas. This looks like a fun project. You know, you must have cool parents if they let you do do this all over your walls. My parents let me do this all over my walls because my dad was later planning on tearing all my walls down and renovating the room. So I did cover my walls in art, but it's not there anymore. So uh, he put it in a dumpster and I guess it's in a landfill somewhere and lots of tiny little pieces. So I don't know what the future of this room is, but hopefully it's better than that.
That looks good. That looks good. It looks like you're going to have a good time coloring this in more also if you're going to do that with this paint. You know, put on some good music. Go at it. Looks sweet. What does this say? Shiv Shivy the cuttlefish. Is this what a cuttlefish looks like? Is that it? Is that a cuttlefish? Oh. I I had a video once where I, I don't know if some of you know what this video is, but I had a video once where I painted with food dipped in ink and then was like eating the food and I got like ink all over me and I was eating all this ink and that was cuttlefish ink. It's edible. Sometimes people use it for cooking because it like, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's a flavor thing. It's very salty. It's like a very strong, salty seafood flavor. And, uh, but I think mostly people use it because it can turn your, like you can like make noodles with it or something. It turns your noodles like pitch black, very, very dark. It's a powerful, powerful color, you know, because normally noodles don't look like that or whatever, whatever else you want to color them with. You could probably make like black bread or something, but I guess rye bread's kind of already, eh, rye bread's not that dark. Maybe it is. I don't remember the last time as I saw rye bread. I think it's just dark brown. This is cool, though. Cute little cuttlefish. Speaking of fish. Wow. This is a dramatic drawing. I like how the bottom and the top are dark, right? Just pitch black. Then you've got what you got going on in the middle here. It would have been tough for me to figure out when to like stop this pattern, like this this swoopy pattern here, and then just transition to the waves. But I think you did a pretty good job of making it look like, I don't know, it's tough. Like the cross section of the water and the making the, the whale look like he's in the water. It would have been difficult for me, but I think you did a pretty good job with it. Then these dark, the dark turmoil of the clouds rolling in the background really sets the scene. Oh, I, I see. I see the person throwing the harpoon now. I almost missed that. I'm glad I zoomed in. Maybe that could be emphasized a little more. Oh, there's more people shooting more harpoons. See, that part maybe is a little bit hard to see, but I also don't know what I would have done to make that more obvious either. Maybe raise the clouds up off the water or something. So there's a white, like a little band of a white background here or something. I don't know. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your drawings, but but that's what you should do. Feces. We have a hand delivering a letter closed with a sticker, which looks like a sad face. And this drawing is by Feces Wizard. Featured are a couple of, they look like intestine, intestines with eyes and noses. I will say this hand is very well drawn. Also, this is a type of collage. It seems like a digital collage. I think this is digitally drawn, but in the background is some really nice uh, fabric there. Nice embroidery. I mean, I don't know about the word feces. That doesn't really excite me, but the composition is nice. The hand is well drawn, right? The colors are nice. You gotta admit, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> oh, who's this guy? Vote for Pedro. I don't remember Napoleon ever sitting on a... on a bench like that, but he may have. So I never remember his hair being that color. This could be a composite. See, I, I'm all, I'm only saying this because I assumed that this person drew this from reference, but maybe they drew it f 
from two references. Napoleon's sitting in one place, and then they looked at some other interior designs, right? I really do like this wall, though. First of all, Napoleon looks great, okay? I don't know if... Is it weird if I say that <laughs> this wall design is my favorite part of this drawing? <laughs> it looks great. This looks great, too. What is this? Uh, gouache, maybe? I think I've proven myself to be notoriously bad at guessing mediums. I could tell this is a nice piece of paper because it has a rough edge along the bottom, though. That's well done, though. Very cool drawing. Vote for Pedro, indeed. We have a couple of little characters here. Mice, maybe? Do you think these are supposed to be mice? Could be. Or maybe entirely other fictional species. Riding on a ladybug. I think they are way too small to be mice in that case. Or maybe it's a giant ladybug. I'm trying to think of what, what furry mammal... Is this is smaller than a ladybug? None that I can think of. They kind of look like cats with clothes on that stand up. It's not making sense, which is okay. I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, of course. But it's, I'm just coming to the conclusion that it's not supposed to make sense. Perhaps, right? It's all right. Oops. Sorry, I just want to scroll over so you can see the rest of this little guy's head. I think it is cool how they have a couple uh, different layers of shadow and shading here. Like the this whole front part of this mouse, this cat, whatever. This, this person's face is in shadow, right? The light is definitely coming from mostly behind him, right? So it's in shadow, but the darkest part of the shadow is this line right here. And I don't know if I would have thought to put that line there, but it looks right. Sometimes it's those things you don't think about that they look right, even though I would have never thought to do it. The same line is here, you know, and here. Also, we got some more animals. Uh... These ones, I think, are definitely cats having a picnic. <laughs> this is a very cute drawing. <laughs> I'm not sure about this addition of the Ferris wheel in the background. Maybe that's just supposed to add to the fun of the drawing. Like, you know, it's like they're having a picnic. The grass is long. They're carefree. Uh, there's flowers. There's a little cottage with vines crawling all over it and if that wasn't enough the state fair is here too it's a very it's a very cozy cozy painting though <laughs> if i was to critique it i would say that, that you're probably running into the same problem i would run into is that there are certain elements of this that look three-dimensional and then so certain elements that don't. You know, like this house is three-dimensional, but then this basket isn't. Or part of the basket is, like the handle is, but then this part is just a rectangle. But I still love it. I could see this in any pretty much a lot of homes. Not mine, but... Ooh, okay. We have a tarot card. I'm going to guess this is by Modernized Psycho, or it could be by Modernized Psycho, or Modernized Psycho, or Modernized Psycho, or Modernized Psycho, or could be by 
19, the sun. It took me a second to figure that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If there's 9 of these, this must be worth 10, right? And then they add up to 19. I did have my... I did have a tarot reading for the first time in my life a day or two ago. I didn't get this card, though. I don't know what it means. I don't know the significance of it. They're not... I did realize that it's not always um, what you think. The cards don't mean what... They don't mean what you think they might mean at, at face value. You can't just look at it and be like, oh, it means this or that, based on what they look like. I'm not... What I'm trying to figure out here is... Are these words modernized psycho, and is this part of the art, or is it just a watermark? I'm guessing it's just a watermark, but it's kind of clouding the whole thing. And what about these stars? Like, they're kind of joining with the stars and clouding the whole thing. I feel like there's a mist. A mist of watermarks has descended upon the drawing, the art. I don't really, I have never really understood watermarks. I haven't... I mean, maybe some people, maybe some people have more problems with their art being stolen. I personally have never watermarked any of my art, and I've never had any of it stolen that I know of either, so I don't know. It's just not worth it for me. Maybe now that I say that, everyone's going to start stealing my art, but maybe not. These orbs do look very cool. I like these glowy things, the art, you know, some of the, the glowiness. Shining on the arms here, shining on the body and the hands, reflecting up onto her face. All right, another tortured soul. Pretty rough looking. I like it. I think this one is probably pretty fun to paint. Sometimes the ones that are the most fun to paint don't always come out looking the most smooth or, well, like, polished, right? And it's perfectly fine. I, I'm a huge advocate of enjoying yourself and enjoying the process and just going at it, just going nuts, just doing what feels good when you're painting or drawing or whatever. Who is this? This is Kurt Cobain or something? I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Could be totally wrong. I like this, though. Mostly blacks and grays. A little bit of red to make it a little bit more gnarly. Oh, wow. This looks like a... Like a legit illustration. Like a... Like super professional, you know? I'm mostly uh, caught up and enthralled by the coloration of the rump and back legs of this horse. Caitlin did a great job here. I think this was probably watercolor, but I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. A little bit of blood splots, splashes. Is this the Headless Horseman? Is that what's going on here? I've never really read that fairy tale. I'm not sure of the significance of the blood. Like, did his hair, head get cut off? Is he just a being without a head? And why is there a pumpkin? Is this something that only happens at night? It's a really pretty drawing, though. Crisp line work. Once again, you see a variation in line weights. I can't stress enough. It really pays off. I I really don't do this enough in my drawings. The very variation in line weights. See? Heavy lines. Thin lines. Looks good. It's a really nice drawing. Oh, this is sweet. I like this. See, see what was I talking about before? All the weird different splotches of color that can go into a face. Obviously, a lot of faces don't look like this. Blue and red and green hair and stuff like that. But it really doesn't look 
that wrong. It looks like, well, of course it looks the wrong color, but like the balance of colors and everything doesn't look that wrong. Our faces aren't one color is what I'm trying to say. Our skin is weird. Everything's weird. It's got the, uh, this guy's either a serious gamer or an airplane pilot. This headset. I like all the different styles going on here, like super detailed, splotchy face, right? Flat hair. It's just one color of green, and then detailed background, and then a totally different style for these things in the background. Flat blocks of color for the the hoodie or whatever this is. Weird rose clouds. I don't know, I just like it. It's like a bunch of weird stuff all pushed together. It's a cool style. And then but the most detailed thing is the face that so kind of draws you in and draws your attention there. I think if, for example, this person had used this much detail over here on these clouds or up here on these flowers, it would have been a little bit distracting, but they didn't, so it looks great. I like it. Oh, oh wow. This person is... Struggling to subdue a, a koi fish of some sort, it seems. An octopus looks on with soulless eyes. There's one fish already chopped up here. Its head is gone. This is making me hungry again. What, I I'm not sure exactly what the significance of these three little panels are, but I do like the borders of them. Very exciting. Obviously, this is kind of reminiscent of you know what you might see in a like a like a manga or something. Super cool. The limited use of color. These little details I just like. You know the vertical lines here. Love that. The details of the the knots in the wood. The koi fish keeps getting bigger and bigger as he pummels it, breaks it over his knee. Maybe is he thinking this stuff? Is this imaginary? Huh. I don't know. Can't go to the next next picture, please. Next. Next. I'm stuck. Where was I? Just have to scroll down. Uh, uh, I was here. To that okay here we are all right this thing is waiting at i was gonna say bus stop at first but now i'm thinking this is a parking meter and this is a meter made of the future or this thing is recharging the the color red here in this drawing makes me think of blood but i don't know I just don't know what's going on, and that's okay. This is a... I'm getting the good level of confused here in this drawing. The good level of wonder. A lot of things that maybe, you know, maybe this sh normally would be a white cloud. It's no longer puffy. It's no longer white. It's a green blob. This would normally be a, a blazing yellow orb in the sky. It's now a blobby, slightly off yellow orb. I don't know what's going on here, but it's weird, and I like it, and uh, it's fun to look at. You know, it's making my, it's kind of jump-starting my imagination about things I've never really thought about before. It's good. All right. At first, I'm thinking maybe this person who 
is maybe wearing a toga, has their hair, is this up here, is this their hair, and has it jumped off their head? And is this their balloon? Is this static electricity around it? Huh. Pretty cool painting. I like the shade of pink too. I like the pink more than the red. It's funny how sometimes red is a very peculiar color. Sometimes it looks great, like uh, here and here I like it a lot, but for some reason here I don't like it very much. Maybe the pink, It's maybe it's weird with pink. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have it all figured out. Oh, some more pink. Check it out. Uh, by Skeletoons. Right, the posture of this creature makes me think that, like, its mouth should be over on this side of its face, but this really looks more like a mouth, so maybe it's turning its head. But what is this thing? Maybe it's just, maybe its head is just some abstract. Oh, this looks more like a nose. I do like these circles, the concentric circles in the background. Oh, that's kind of weird to zoom in and out of. Wee 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 wee. The pink outline is good. I like that. And then there's even a, another outline that's the same color as the background. Nice touch. This is all kind of rough, which isn't bad. It's just hmm. this thing got into a mess. I think it was eating something. It's devouring something. It got all over its mouth too, and it's. These lines right here are a little interesting. I don't know about those. I don't know how I would have done it better though. Th those, that's probably the only part of this drawing that really bothers me that I don't really like is these dark lines that don't really, I don't know, it's just like open, open, like little weird horseshoe, sh horseshoe shapes. It's probably fine. I'm probably overthinking it. Would, would it be bad to say I think this one is also unfinished? What we've got here so far, though, looks pretty sweet. Yes. Well, well crafted hands. Once again, these ones are really nice. I can tell you really took your time with these. Like even each section of the finger is like different color. Well crafted hands, well crafted face. Like maybe I wouldn't, you know, maybe you've even stu studied like the different muscles of the face. I don't know, like. You can see there's like different parts in slightly different colors. It's pretty cool. I want to see what the rest of it's going to be. I don't really know what's going on with this weird shape here, but the stuff here, pretty sweet. Dramatic pose. I, I feel the vibe. Right, here's a guy with sticks on his head. Hello, sir. What do you have sticks on your head? Is this like a, a leather jerkin he's wearing? He has maybe the most tamed beard of all time. Every hair just pff, straight down. Seamless transition from hair to, to beard and the mustache and you can, can't even see where his mouth is barely very impressive now what I'm trying to figure out is does the paper just have a lot of weird splotches on it or did they add did they like get the watercolor and get a little bit of blue paint on there and a little bit of red paint a little bit of green paint and just add all these fine dots by like s flicking the the paper or maybe they they loaded up the watercolor on a paintbrush I mean I mean a toothbrush went you know what I'm talking about? Splattering it? That's cool, though. He's looking down on someone with a little bit of disdain, I dare say. It's a fun style, though. Oh, wow. How do you say this? Is this a... Is this a butte? A boot? A butt? I feel like I've seen it. Feel, heard it. See... I wanted to say heard it said, but I first said seen, and then I said felt it. 
I felt it said a lot of different ways. This, I, this seems like it's pretty much on the level where it could be on like a national parks postcard. Okay. This looks good. What is it? Is this gouache? Can I, can I guess that this one's gouache? The, should we just rename this series? Peter guesses about how paintings were made and what they're made of and gets it right half the time. Love the warmth of this though and the cool the cool sky behind it. And the dimensions of this piece of paper, really cool. It's pretty. It's just pretty. All right, we got a skateboard. I bet that took a while. Once you start doing a doodle or a drawing like this on something like a skateboard, you start realizing, wow, maybe a skateboard is bigger than I expected. Definitely bigger than most pieces of paper. But uh, you did it. You went all the way. I like how, you know, most of it's different. Most of it's just crazy different uh, little designs. But you kind of tied it together like uh, this design here. You also did over here. So there's a little bit of coherence. That's good. And some of these, like this stuff here, keeps popping up again. Like over here and over here. That's a cool little pattern. I like this pattern with the, I call them tentacles or noodles. And then there's little swirls and dots mixed up in the middle. It looks like you had a good time doing this one. I wonder what type of markers you use. And if you're going to finish it, you know, maybe it's just Sharpies. Are you going to seal it with something? Are you going to skate, skate this board? Oh, what is this? Is this something exploding? At first, it, I, I, mean, I hesitate to say maybe is this a, like a volcano? But then I see like something right here that looks like it could be like a structure. I'm going to blur my eyes and look at it. Wait, let's zoom out. Can we zoom out more? We can't zoom out more. If I blur my eyes, it really does look like a whole mountain exploding super dramatically. And maybe this is just a building in the foreground. The more I blur my eyes, the more terrifying it gets. Like the more realistic it looks, the more I blur my eyes. If I blur my eyes, I realize that this line here is a shoreline. And this is the reflection in the water, I think. I wonder if that's right. I wonder if that's what it's supposed to be. Hmm. There's obviously a lot of like action and Something crazy is going on, is what I'm trying to say. It's pretty sweet. All right. Some more freckles. We've had a few freckled, freckled portraits here. Watercolors. With a... Uh... Now this one I like. This one's, this one's cool because we have different, a few different types of, you know, different colors of line work, line work, which look like they might have kind of uh, seeped a little bit after the, the watercolors were, were added, which is a, you know, sometimes it's frustrating, but sometimes it's kind of a cool effect. I think that is kind of a struggle to, to do the, the dark background around the edge of something like hair. Like how close do you go to a strand of hair? It's like impossible. But it turned out looking good. I, as a perpetual mouth breather, I totally understand this feeling of leaving your mouth hanging open like this. I, t I understand, okay? I understand. The collarbones maybe look a bit off. Wait, I'm trying to figure out where my color bones are. Maybe it's just the perspective. Could be. I, I really like these pink, the pink line work though. It's a good addition. All right, 
Here we have some sort of, well, I, I was about to say like an Egyptian snake. I don't know what made me think it was Egyptian. Maybe it was the, the, the golden brickwork in there. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way though. Is this a top hat? Does this snake have a top hat? It's very classy. And it looks like it's, is this supposed to be like it sunk its fangs into this forbidden fruit? Oh, look. It says, hello? It's like a previous page of the sketchbook or some piece of paper that's falling out of it. And there's some other colorful drawing over here, but no, one one drawing for per, per person. This is an interesting way to color in the textures here. It's just like a bunch of little scribbles, and but they're in different little... Uh, Different colors, like some are yellowish, some are orange, some are red. And they didn't completely color in any one section of this, of these scales. Just put like a little scribble inside each one. Hmm. Interesting. Lots of just little scribbles, like they're signing their initials over and over again, endlessly. Looks good though. Hmm. Peeking through. This, this is crisp. This is crisp work right here. I mean, I think my favorite part of this is this weird little tube system. I wish I had a higher resolution version of this available. I want to get a better look at this weird, these weird little tubes coming through. I love the shading on the inside here. Curls around. Lots of dots. I don't know if those are manually done or some sort of gradient or filter. I don't know how things are done digitally most of the time. I mean, it's, it makes me uncomfortable, this drawing. With the mosquitoes and these weird antennae. Is that how you say that? Plural of antenna? Or is it just antenna? Antennas, antennae? I don't know. Leave me alone. The yellow fingernails, awful. Really bad. The joints in the fingers. It's just really uncomfortable drawing, but I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It looks good. I feel like this is like a drawing that was done in like Illustrator or something. That's my guess. Okay? That's my guess. What's yours? All right. Oh look, it's a uh, it's an animal person. But like I said, my throat really hurts. There's still a lot of artistic skill here. All right, first. I want to mention how pretty the background is. I love trying to draw swirls like this. This person is very good at drawing these swirls. Plus, they did it in so much more color than I usually do. In fact, this looks like uh, this looks like that guy from The Lion King talking to Simba from the clouds. Simba. I don't know if that was supposed to look like a face right there. But yeah, I love these swirls. And, no, it's well done. Look, the color, the line work, the fabric of the dress. There's actual anatomy going on here, okay? This person knows what they're doing. Plus, this little bouquet right here is gorgeous. I love that. The fiery uh, flowers, or whatever this is, nicely mimics... Some of the colors, both in the fur up here, and I don't know what they're sitting here looking at. Are they watching a sunset or something? I don't really know what's going on in this picture, or what, I don't know what this black thing is. Is this an ear? Is that an ear? I don't know. Also, I'm starting to learn to like things like uh, just like the previous, um, well, the previous drawings you saw, non, like, colored art, but 
with non-black lines. Like next time I do like a watercolor drawing where I draw the lines first or second, I want to do the lines with a like a color besides black because it, it looks really good with these. Is this like purple or burgundy or something? It looks good. Oh no, I'm stuck again. Why won't it let me go to the next drawing? Why is this so difficult? Here we are. This looks like um, if someone took a sock puppet and tried to flesh it out into like a real thing. That's what that looks like. I don't know if that's what the artist intended. It's creepy. It's creepy. And uh, it makes me uneasy. And then I've got some of the, uh, like a fake language in there, scribbled away. It looks good. I like how loopy that fake language is. It's fun to look at. It's entertaining. It, 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 I want to deep, I want, I want, I want to deep fry that language and to eat it. It looks crunchy and tasty. I like the little, little blue dots on top of the nose there. Really cool. All right. Coke bottles. Interesting. I feel like this is um, similar to some famous artist I should know of. Who is this similar to? I'm trying to figure out which one is my favorite. Am I supposed to choose a favorite out of these six? I'm probably not supposed to choose a favorite, but it is very cool that they seem insular. They seem like their own drawings, their own paintings, their own each thing, but they are affected by each other. Like this one has the yellow reflections from this one. This one has yellow reflections from this one. This one has red reflections from this one, right? It kind of connects them laterally. I like that. Oh no, that's what she's saying. Oh no, what is happening? The scene outside, reality is breaking down. I think that's why it looks okay that, um, like this is like the stairway here and this dresser and whatever this is on the wall. What is this like a, like a sconce or something? like a hanging plant. I don't know what I'm looking at there, but these look a little bit unfinished, right? It's okay because everything else is so wacky too. It kind of hammers at home how, how weird everything is. Oops. I like the hair here. Oh, there's a few. It's mostly just bold colors swirling around, but then there's a few fine lines mixed in as well. And then eyes are hard to draw in the first place, but then drawing eyes when you're like pulling the eyelids down like this, really well done. That's That seems challenging. Nice colors, it's fun. Wacky, weird. And this pattern on the, on the shirt too, wow. I think this is a drawing, oops, this is a drawing of someone sitting here. Actually, I'm changing my mind. Actually, I don't know. At first I thought this is a, it's supposed to be picturing someone imagining all these things. Like they're just going like this and it's just like, it's just that easy to imagine this stuff. It's, ow, I just hit my elbow. Just um, it's like flowing out of the tip of their finger, right? All these mythical beasts and people and 
I don't know. But maybe they are. But then, but then I thought maybe they're scraping it onto the wall with their fingers. Maybe they're actually drawing it or something. But it seems too casual. Like they're not. It seems too easy. Maybe they are drawing it though. I don't know. It's pretty cool though. Pencil drawing. <laughs> Bear, alligator, bull, and that dude, whoever he is. Wow. Okay. Look, more splotchy faces. How many colors do you see on my face right now? At least as many as you see on this face right now. It's pretty crazy. I am, I am flabbergasted by faces. It's amazing. This is really well done. I love this kind of thing where it's just like, they're like blig. It, it seems like almost the, the color, the paint is almost applied haphazardly, just kind of thrown on there. There's big chunks of color, but then it all somehow works together so perfectly and precisely. I don't know how people do that. It's really pretty. And this big, this big dark section right here. I like uh, this, this corner right here. I love also with the white dribbling down through it. And I don't know. I just really like this. And the, I don't know. I like it a lot. It's probably one of my favorite ones so far in this whole video. And there's no name on it. This person didn't put their name on it. Like, why? Just put your name on it. Just, you know, take a second with some app or something. All right? What is this? Uh, what's her name? Um, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Harley Quinn. That's who this is supposed to be, right? What is this? T T N T T E N. I think it's supposed to say Guten, and then they were gonna write tag. Guten Tag over here, and it just says, like, what does that? I mean, it's good day, right? Or hello. This, this, this is well done, though. The uh, like this white, the white static around her face, makes her face pop, the focal point. What would you call this style? Like pop art a little bit or something? Or is it just, or is it just straight up comic book style, do you think? I'm going to be honest. This character, Har Harlequin, Harley Quinn, is that what she's called? She kind of creeps me out. Not this drawing but just the whole character, you know, not really into her. She's just, you know, I don't like her. That's, I'll say it, okay? I don't like her. She's too much for me. Not that anyone asked, okay? But, hey, sorry. This is, she's, she's well drawn though. I'll give you that. And I, what if I'm totally wrong? Maybe that's not who this is supposed to be. I could be totally wrong. All right, we've got an owl soaring over billowy blue clouds. Mixed media. And I don't know what those clouds are made with besides water vapor could be gouache again. The owl, it's definitely a uh, pencil or uh, maybe, yeah, I think pencil. I was about to say maybe, maybe like charcoal, but I think it's just like a dull pencil. These are very broad strokes. This is cool too. This is like a, the signature. It's kind of like a cool graffiti tag looking thing. It's cool style though. I kind of have this weird feeling this person may have drawn this owl a number of times or something similar to it. I don't know. I don't know why I say that. It's, a, it's cool though. I like it. 
I also like this cloud. It almost looks like a super stylized uh, ocean wave frozen. But clouds sometimes look like motion waves. Because they've got a lot of the same stuff going on. Alright, we got a cool doodle here. Oops. A few different segments. Square with circles in it and another doodle. A circle behind it. With kind of an aperture aperture format. And then some uh, shims back here. It's pretty cool. Nice textures and wibbly wobbly bits. Nice, nice. Uh, I can tell you used a ruler here some. Which is totally fine, okay? There are no rules against rulers. At all. Hey, do what you want to do. Do what you got to do. Just draw those lines, okay? You could draw the, you could draw the whole drawing with a ruler. Use a ruler for every single line. That would be totally acceptable. We've got another uh, cat person. Wait, let's look at this this poster back here. Fallout Boy. Wait, let's look out the window. It's pretty cool how I, I kind of like that style of like drawing something digitally, right? But then like this also feels like another style of collage, like. Uh, Adding in this, I, I, I assume this is like a photo of like a forest or some trees. Actually, it might be also digital art. But, you know, adding the poster instead of drawing a poster. It's a cool kind of addition. Yeah, I've been here before. This has been me before. Except I wouldn't just leave the I would just leave the burger there okay eat the burger it's getting cold it's getting cold it's bothering me it's just bothering me is all all right all right once again white highlights making things pop a little bit got a big mustache just a bunch of faces mushed together, really. Except this one is just eyes that, this one seems like just eyes and I'm not sure what's going on in this corner actually. What is this, um, it's kind of like a concave triangle. Is this eye and mouth in this guy's chest? I guess it doesn't really matter. In fact, this guy has another triangle in his face. There's a little highlight in that. I don't really know. Maybe it's just like a little fleshy protuberance. Maybe that's what it is. Great use of, uh, I think these are colored pencils to do all this coloring, huh? Maybe? I don't know. Like it's very, like this gradient of this yellow section very gradually disappears. Like I like, this is maybe, <laughs> maybe my favorite part of this whole drawing. This thing that looks maybe like a weird yellow and orange tongue. Subtle touch of orange here, then up here. These eyes are super weird. I like that actually. Looks like the like the pupils are popping out of the eyes. I don't think that's even possible, but it's happening. It's happening. This is this is also weird. Much more minimal though. Minimalist? What's going on here? <laughs> were they like sliding and they were trying to s slow down? I, <laughs> I don't know. I like it though. It, l it looks like an illustration for some story. 
I'm trying to think what it reminds me of, but I'm just not sure. I like how the the tears are flying along backwards. See, this is how you know it, which direction everything's going. The tears are flying this way. So they must be sliding to the right. But I don't know why everything's falling apart. It's pretty dramatic anyways. Oh, look, another collage. What's shooting out of this guy's face? I don't know what these are. I don't know what's in there. What is this? Got a misty, rocky hilltop, mountaintop. A couple of guys. Pretty cool. I don't really know what else to say about it. Maybe there's some deeper message I'm not getting. I will say, I am only human, and I am getting hungrier, though. I should have eaten a bigger meal before I started this task. All right, here we have something that reminds me both of Slender Man and the Iron Giant, that little character up there. I shouldn't call him a little character. There's nothing really much for scale except that the evergreen tree, which he is almost, does seem to be almost as tall, uh, tall as. It's a nice scene, though. Standing on the banks of a, a lake, it seems. Watching the sunset. This, I'm sure of, must be a sunset. It's got to be. There's no way this is sun, sunrise. I'm just not getting sunrise vibes from this. People don't usually stand so forlornly at sunrises. Sunrises just have a more hopeful feel to them. You know, the start of a new day. And the colors usually don't seem so uh, rich or something. I mean, sometimes they do. I've seen a few really vibrant and rich sunrises, so I don't really know what I'm saying. It's, I don't know why this bothers me so much that I've never... I feel like this happened last time I made one of these videos. I just couldn't tell the difference between sunrise and sunsets. Is there a way? All right. This one right here reminds me a lot of this one right here. Actually, and this one. All three of these. This one... This one and this one have like a small central image. Looks like there's two hands cradling of a drop of blood. I'm trying to figure out how this background was made and how it looks so perfect, right? It looks immaculate, the background, like all of these zigzags, there's no mistakes. Like it all just, it looks great. Sometimes there's like a little pattern of like a dark green zigzag, light green, dark, light, dark, but then it's just like, all of these are, I mean, maybe if you have a different monitor than me, they look different, but all three of these look roughly the same darkness, and then this one's slightly darker, lighter, lighter, even lighter, slightly darker, slightly lighter, darker, lighter, dark. I don't know. So maybe there's not supposed to be a pattern. Maybe they had like a grid system. Maybe it's just digital. I don't know. I feel like I can faintly see some like pencil lines going in between them, but then I think it might be just be an optical illusion. I'm just like staring at it for too long. It's cool though. I don't know what's going on here, but it's cool. That's all I need to know. All right. This, um, just going off the top of my head, this seems like Teen Titans X gorillas i don't know why this is just what i thought of first i like it though first of all i like that there's only no oh, i like that there's a few different types of outlines going on here first we've got like the black outline like this little part of her hair here and this hair and then we also have like the green outline the outline that matches the color 
that's been colored in. And then like down here, there's no outline. Like there could have been another outline around all this stuff, but there isn't. And I think that's also interesting. Also has another effect. This looks cool though. It's an interesting little character. I'm afraid she's really going to hurt her tongue on her teeth though. Be careful. Don't bite your tongue. Has anyone here that has ever bitten their tongue knows it can be painful. And most of us don't have a row of teeth this sharp in our mouth. Cheers. All right, we got a cartoon here. At the top it says, oh, you can't see, it says cartoons. Haven't you ever wondered why women in cartoons are visually drawn more realistically than the males? Sometimes the males don't even wear clothes. Side by side, they look pretty silly, don't you think? No. Is this supposed to be an example of women being drawn realistically? And males not wearing clothes? I guess this guy isn't. I was trying to think of an example of males not wearing clothes. Is this a male? I guess he's not wearing clothes. I haven't really seen many cartoons recently, so I'm not sure which ones don't wear clothes and which women are drawn so much more realistically. I can't really think of any examples that... I, I need examples. I can't think of any that, that this is true for. It could be true. I don't really know. I don't really know what's going on here, to be honest. This this is well drawn though. This character kind of reminds me of uh like what's her name? Jessica Rabbit or something. This is like a serious uh this is a good like this person knows what they're doing with the uh cartooning style though. The strokes. Once again, varying line width, something I need to do again and more. I like this effect of the hatching at the top half of the panel. Very cool. All right. We have a portrait. Someone important. Across two pieces of paper. That's how important they were. That their portrait required two pieces of paper. And I'm wondering if... Well, I'm trying to figure out why the margins are different. Do you think maybe they started drawing it here? And then they're like, eh, it's weirdly close to the bottom of the paper. Let's, let's also go here to this part of the paper. I think maybe there was, there was tape here or something. And it looks like there was tape here. You can see the same line here, but then they... You can see the same line on the top piece of paper, but then they painted over this one, but not on the bottom. Anyways... I get caught up on weird things. I'm sorry. It looks good. These all, these like this is uh. The the mediums here are so different. Like this is like gouache or something, and then this is watercolor, and then I mean I don't know why I said watercolor. This is obviously colored pencil. With a few of those highlights I was talking about. Doot, doot, doot. But then this, these are so much more like crisp. What is this uh, little headband and the earrings? They almost look like stickers, like actual different solid physical objects, but on top of the drawing. They're so much more uh, crisp than everything else on the drawing. And then here's the, I don't know. It, something about this, yeah. What the, the, the balance of it seems off, you know? Like she seems to be way less important. And uh, I think the like the background is too strong and stuff is what I'm saying. I could be wrong though. I'm open to other opinions. The, like the general anatomy is good though. Like the eyes are in the right place. You didn't give her a third eye like some other people tried doing with theirs. All right, we got someone posing with some flowers, smoking a cigarette. 
baklava? What's the difference between a baklava and a, and a ski mask, huh? Backpack, sweatshirt. This is well done. I like it. I'm not sure what the message here is. I've got bloody and bruised fist. It's pretty. Is it like, is it supposed to be framing violence and conflict as beautiful? something or is it just supposed to be looking at the the contrast between these two ideas hmm. I mean there definitely is a, a contrast there which is the the juxtaposition right that's definitely a con a con concept in art boy now here we have some lines Black lines, red lines, blue lines. My voice is going away. This is one of those uh, little wooden models you can get at like the arts and crafts store to practice your figure drawing, but they just drew the wooden model how it really is. What language is this, by the way? I can't really read it very well because of the lines, but I don't think I would be able to read it anyways. Also, Three reasons why I couldn't read these words. One, the lines on top of it. Two, it's in cursive. Three, it's in a different language. Cool drawing though, I like how some of it, only some of it is unmasked. I can tell you had a good time drawing. This is this seems like something that happened during school, maybe. I don't know. Or while you were supposed to be studying, or maybe talking on the phone. You know what I mean? Just one of those things, just like if I draw if I draw these lines close enough to each other and slow enough, maybe the whole day will be gone when I'm done. You know, one, one of those things you hope takes up as much time as possible. I've been there before. Right? I feel like the style of drawing eyes I've seen somewhere before. Where have I seen that, huh? With the eyelids, with the gradient right down the middle. I like these runes. Are these like, is this a known system of runes? Like, do people speak these? Do people know what these mean? Or is this just kind of made up, a made up thing? I feel like it would make your hat very heavy if these are made out of any sort of significant metal, though. Scary snake. I'm not that scared of snakes. I'd rather run, in, run into a snake than a big spider, but I still wouldn't want to have one on my staff. I'm guessing it's supposed to be a pet snake, though. I do like how the background, it's like a some sort of chromatic aberration effect applied to the background to distinguish it from the foreground. That's a cool effect. It's like a, a wandering mystic or something to be honest i like pretty much all of it except for the eyes i don't know why that that style of shading the eyelids bothers me and the eyelids are so dark or something i don't know it just it's weird to me but i mean if that's your style and that's how you like doing it it's totally fine not everyone has to like everything not everyone is ever gonna like everything it's all right. Doesn't mean you should change what you're doing. Well, that's pretty crazy. Could tell this person has been drawing with pencils for a long time. Maybe this is a, this could be a self-portrait. If this was like a little elf person drew themselves, I see more five-pointed stars here pentagrams is there a difference between a pentagram a pentacle a pentacle it's 
pretty cool though. The hair is probably my favorite part of this one. I draw, I, I doodle a lot of things that I think are inspired by swirls and swoops like this. Things I see in hair, smoke, clouds, all kind of related. Ink swirling through water, you know, it's all like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Struggling with hands, I see. I think all of these fingers are maybe <laughs> missing a knuckle. <laughs> it's all right, though. I'm definitely, I think a lot of people looking at this would not even see the hand and just go straight to looking at this amazing head and face. It's really incredible. It's a great drawing. All right. Well, I was about to guess what kind of painting this was, but I can just zoom in right here. Egg tempera. So they've smeared egg all over this and somehow it turned out looking incredible. Like I just said, I'm a huge fan of clouds. I was on the border I'm trying to figure out if I like some of these shapes up here in these clouds, like some of these blockier shapes, like the broad brush strokes that didn't get broken down more. I think I really like them. I really do like these, these big purple shapes in here. Cause a lot of these shapes like over here, they're like fluffier, more cloudy, right? Tradi more traditionally cloudy. But the more I look at this, the more I do like these other shapes that look like almost just purple flakes riding in the clouds. I guess maybe they're supposed to be the shadows or something, but then they got the dark deep blues up here. I really like this painting. And of course they took the picture all artsy. <laughs> Had a little bouquet right here. Very nice. <laughs> hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Make your picture look good and your picture of your picture. Do it and regret it later. And then, oh, it's a cigar. It says Haram. This reminds me of a Terminator, like one of the early Terminators that looked human and then like part of their flesh would get ripped away and then there'd be like little mechanical bits working away on the inside. I don't know if their eyeballs fell out very often, but this is a pretty intense drawing. Where's like the bottom of their, like their jaw fell off. Is this part is this still called your upper jaw? If you're, is this, or is this the whole part down here, your lower jaw or like your whole jaw? Is there such a thing as your lower jaw or is what I'm calling my lower jaw, your whole jaw? Okay. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'll leave it alone. Pretty crazy here. Nice, uh, digital work. I like all these weird squigglies up here around the edge. Good variation. Like, uh, it doesn't get uniform at all. Like, you didn't just go squiggle, 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 squiggle. You'd, you kept it weird. You kept, you know, Frizzy, Frizzy Head would know. I think... I think the comment on this one said that they were drawing a, they were looking at a statue or something. I'm not sure though. I don't really know what I'm looking at, to be honest. I mean, but even without knowing that it's pretty cool because you can kind of see what they were doing. What I like about this really is that there's this mass, this shape, right? There's something going on up here that could be a body. You know, there could be uh, like legs and a foot, foot here, and it's all balancing. 
I bet this is supposed to be a, uh, like the top of a building, right? Like a tall pointed top of a building. And then it's balancing. This is like where all the, all the pressure and balance is right here. So you get a little bit of, um, a feeling of like apprehension when you create these tiny points where everything relies like right there. It's a good effect. It happened in real life like that because that's how maybe the 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 statue was created, but you can do that in your drawings whenever you want. Mm. Oh, hello, Keanu. <laughs> With the cybernetic arm. An upgrade. Very nice. How's it going? It looks pretty good. I don't know. He might have turned a jelly a little bit here in his wrist. This this tapestry draped behind him looks very good also. Almost too good. Like that looks more crisp and polished than him almost. It's really good though. I like this. It's like he paid to have this done of himself. Like, let me pose for a portrait. We'll put it in the grand hall. I'll put on my bulletproof vest. It'll be special. <laughs> it's a good drawing. It's funny. I like that. Oh, wow. Some of these, I think, would really, you know, the, the physical pieces, I think I would... Sometimes you just want to know how big it is. I guess I... I guess it's fitting on the easel pretty much perfectly. So I guess it, I would guess it's probably like 18 by 24. This one's really colorful. Reminds me a little bit of Peter Max, maybe. This, this, this hairy part right here makes me uncomfortable in the best way. The blue apples. Eyes in the middle of flowers. The dark background is a great move. Pretty sweet. I love this gradient of the, the orange to the red there. That just kind of blends into these, it's like a blue vase. I don't know, it's, yeah, it's hard to tell when one thing becomes another in this painting. I like that. It all kind of blends into each other, yeah. Sorry, I'm just kind of moving on here. Sorry if I don't spend enough time on one. This is another one I wish was higher. Uh, what? I want more pixels. Give me more pixels. Maybe if oh, if you if you blur your eyes, you kind of get more pixels. Your brain kind of assumes what's there for you. That's pretty cool, huh? I bet it would be cool to look at all this though. Like a crazy city. Yeah, it's like some sort of, like, if Atlantis, is, isn't it a story that Atlantis drowned or sunk below the ocean? If Atlantis actually didn't drown, but detached from the earth and floated up into the sky and disappeared off into the sky, I think this is probably what it would have looked like. If you want to give it like a little bit more depth and stuff, you know, start shading stuff in, give it some more dark spots. So it looks, um, you know, from a distance. So it looks just less like a, just a big flat piece of gray. You know, if I blur my eyes now, it just looks like a, a gray splotch. I have to like zoom in to start seeing stuff, but like, like, I don't really know how to tell you. I wish, because this is, I feel like this is how a lot of, I don't know what your goals are, okay? But this is kind of how a lot of my drawings used to look. And then I, it's kind of what you're doing here with these things, the the darkness, the shading underneath these. But if you took this principle and started applying it to the whole thing, I don't know, you might like the results. 
They might not, though. This is pretty cool anyways. All right, all right. Another collage. I like all the collages we're getting. Very cool. Constructed faces from various places. Crayon in the background. Crayons are uh, legitimate. Or, or they're legitimate, okay? We don't look down on crayons. I've been to the Art Institute of Chicago, a very prestigious museum, and there are multiple pieces there drawn in crayon, okay? This is cool. Not really sh sure what it is or what to what it's saying. Maybe I don't maybe I'm not smart enough. I like the fact that you just straight up use like tape. Like don't hide it, you know? I like I like that. But not for all of it. Okay. All right. Wow, is is this well first of all, you have three lead holders here that seem to be at least I think they're all different well, I call them calibers, like different widths. Is this a pencil stippling piece? That's pretty cool. Is it bad if, once again, I ask if this is done? I think it must be, because doesn't this little thing up here mean you posted it on Instagram? I'm not sure what this means. Um, it looks cool regardless. trying to figure out if it's done or not anyways i that actually kind of inspires me to try stippling some more with pencil but it seems like it's more difficult because if you just touch the pencil to the paper not much happens do you like wiggle it around a little bit or do you move it slightly in what direction it looks really good though it looks i can't tell if this part is out as is this like out of focus i wish i could see this part in focus but like this is the most interesting part of it down here almost to me. This, These dots look great. These dots over here. It's pretty, pretty cool. Pencil stippling. I'm all for it. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. This little person says. Thank you. Appreciate you too. I wonder what this little thing right here is. Is this part of another person that got cut off? Cut out of the picture? We want to see them. Oh, this is cool. I, I like this little style. It's simple. But it gets it done. It doesn't need to be too much sometimes. It's cute. I think I like how this is just like a... It's just like a perfect circle, I think. Like, don't don't get too crazy with it if you don't need to. Oof. Okay, look. The lower jaw again. This looks a little bit, um... You know, like... Would you, would you call this surrealism? Especially with the... I don't know, all these like weird hooks going through it. It's definitely kind of a little bit gory with the the knife and the blood and everything. The hooks. It's like they're deconstructing a face. But to deconstruct the face, they had to construct the drawing. Huh. Huh. And then they... These little... The addition of these little swatches back here is interesting. I think this, these are critical, I think, because without these, it would have seemed uh, almost heartless. Like they were only doing it for the fun of it or something. <laughs> okay, some more crazy faces. It looks like we're, but judging by the corners of this, as you could, oops keep touching the wrong you know as you can see 
in every corner, sorry, my face is blocking some of these. Um, there's like little things that make it look like we're looking down into like a toy box or something. If you're looking down into this, into this toy box and you had to pick a toy, which one would you pick? <laughs> I would pick this big green one. And then maybe this one because I want to know how it feels to, p to pick this one up. This one right here is what I... Is it gooey? Is it just stuck like this? Will I get infected if I touch these boils on the side? Is this one stuck like this also? Or is it spilling and... S is it evaporating? Is this one alive and moving? Because I don't like these little legs or the stinger. And maybe that's not what's happening here at all, because it does seem like gravity is pulling these dribbly drools down a little bit. So the, these are definitely done with marker. Marked with marker. And a little bit of line work here, too. So this wasn't marker. This maybe like a felt tip pen or something for the line work. Very nice. Oh, some more uh, brown paper for the mid-tones, right? And then we come in later with the, the white for the highlights. This is cool. I like this. Kind of weird. Some more fake language. I assume it's fake. Maybe, maybe it means something. We don't know. The dots. I like these dots going up the side. Plenty of nice lines. It's, it's obviously a astronaut. It looks like he's kind of disintegrating a little bit. I'll be honest. I, I think he's in trouble. Or maybe this is just how he likes it. This looks like it was fun. Have you ever just played with watercolors? mixing them, splotching them onto the paper, really wet watercolors, and you can just watch them go like this across the paper and maybe put a bunch of water on first and then add some color and just watch it work, watch it seep in, watch it soak in. And I mean, this does kind of, you know, look like some maybe lily pads or flowers sitting on the surface of the water, but I'm, I don't know what would be going on you know, here, maybe this is like a tree leaning over the water and this is a tree line, but I'm really more interested in just, <laughs> I think how fun this would have been to do, how satisfying to do these washes and these splotches. I like it. In his home at Relia, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. Yes, he does. Some good, some pretty good Cthulhu art. Personally, personally, I think his wings should be like four times as big. That's just my, and I think his tentacles should be like four times as big. And I think his body shouldn't exist. I think he should pretty much just be wings and tentacles. Now that I think more about it. No, but every, you know, it's definitely open to interpretation. Great drawing. Very nice watercolors. Nice wash here in the background. Yes, yes. Gradients here. Shadows underneath his little tentacle beard thing. Nice curly cues. Reminds me of curly fries. Yes, I'm still hungry. Mm. And very nice handwriting here, too. Did you do that? It looks perfect. Mm. This is definitely the work of Cthulhu. Probably swatted the plane right out of the sky. Oh, no. Did they bury someone? Is that what's going on over here? Hold on. There's a siren coming. I don't think that was that loud. Anyways, 
I drank some water. This does seem to be a grave or something, which is pretty sad. Good thing these people are social distancing. This is more than six feet, though. They're just all standing around as one lone figure pulls someone else from the wreck. It does raise a lot of questions. What's going on here? First of all, is this puddle... Does the puddle... Is it... <laughs> Is it a puddle? I'm imagining that it's about this big and they just plop down in it. Although it's probably supposed to be like the end of a lagoon or something. Once again, great work on like these washes. I, I mean, it looks a little bit weird. I think it's like pixelated by the way it was take the picture was taken or something. But I think it's I think it's just watercolors, right? Sorry, I think I'm like bad at drinking water. I. I think you're just not supposed to drink water and then talk a bunch right after. Hmm. That's pretty cool. It's like a face emerging from the doodle. It's like there are a bunch of these weird lines lying here on the paper. And then a face slowly started emerging from it. That's the feeling I get from this. It's you probably saw like the tip of the nose first, you know, and then some of the eyebrows and then some lips. I like that. Yeah. Also, once again, various line weights. I can't tell if this is traditional or digital. It could be. I mean, the fact that it's so high contrast it makes me think maybe it's tradi it's it's digital but i think it's just traditional scanned in and then like move the sliders around in photoshop so it's just the paper is super white you know and the lines are super black all right here we have a a horse drawing do not steal do not repost is that part of the art? Like, I feel like doing that to your own art. Is it, is it me or... I would just never do this to my own art. Is it weird that I'm... Like, if, if I had to do this to my own drawings to post them somewhere, I just wouldn't post them. I don't know. It's just so weird to me. I don't mean to criticize people for trying to protect their own intellectual property. Maybe it's a deviant art thing. Maybe it's a deviant art thing. Maybe it's like a whatever this style is. Like what is this like anime style? Like maybe art theft is more it's a more chronic thing in other communities or circles that I'm not familiar with. Or maybe my art gets stolen all the time and I just don't realize it. What would they do with my stolen art? Are they, I don't know. It's just, I'm, it's just, I don't know what's going on. I totally think people should not steal art, of course. I just don't know if this is the solution. This, this, this is very well done though. Like I can tell you have, I tell this person knows about horses and how to draw them. Like there's like some serious like anatomy and stuff going on here. Like you probably know about like the muscles and I don't know. Some of it's kind of, I can't really tell what's going on here at the bottom. I'm trying to see it, but it's, it's intense though. Glowing eye, waving dramatic mane, a little bit moody. I like these flowers across the top too. Anyways, sorry. Hope I didn't offend you saying I don't understand this part, but. Oh, this is cool. Hello. So this is an elf, I guess. Maybe going to some sort of carnival with like black light reactive body paint on. Go into like the elf version of electro 
what's it called? Electronic Daisy Carnival or whatever. Or the, uh, or Burning Man. We're just out for a good night. This is really, I love the colors here. A little bit of the green, the purple. Lots of reds and yellows here. Is this the hair swirling around? Or they just walk through like a really weird pungent plume of smoke because it looks like they already have some hair here. But I don't know what else this would be if it's not hair. It could be a weird hat, I suppose. I wouldn't pretend to know what elves are doing. Or up to. The more I look at this, the more I like this drawing a lot more than I expected to. Just like the the variety of the patterns and things drawn on here, like these little these little horizontal lines and the little circle on the middle of the cheek there and this little swirl and these lines which I thought, you know, were looked sloppy, but actually they seem like kind of perfect. Stuff which, you know, I would have never thought to draw things quite like this. And this little thing connecting the eye to the bottom of the jaw here. It all kind of fits together perfectly in the the white here. Yeah, it's all great. I like it a lot. All right, this guy says, how swell. And it looks like he really means it. It's maybe the first swell thing he's seen in a long time by the looks of it. Huh. Got quite the schnoz, too. It's a fun little drawing. All right, here we have a castle. Let's look at this uh, castle. Well, it seems well fortified. Couple of men at arms. Couple, these ones are outside the castle. These two are inside the castle. And then they attack. Oh, this guy, his grappling hook failed. Or this guy, he knocked off his grappling hook. That sucks. That really sucks. This guy is about to. Well, he looks like he's looking in the wrong direction, to be honest. He's looking out across the battlefield, but little does he know, even though he should know because there's a grappling hook at his armpit, should know that there's a guy looking very afraid, climbing right up to him. I'm guessing this is part of a larger story, but it's pretty cool. It's well done. Go to work with the, I think, markers. No, there's no like words or dialogue, and I don't know if there needs to be. Sometimes you can just watch things unfold. I'm I'm getting restless because I have to pee so bad again. I drank this whole bottle of water almost twice. There's some, see, this is how some people know hands so well. And are good at drawing hands because they know what's underneath the hands. This is cool. This like looks like a little section, little x-ray section, huh? It is weird that this is what's in our hands. Like there's that there's that many tiny little tiny little bones in our wrists. And then our hand our phalanges. That's what these are called, right? Phalanges. These are our knuckles, right? It looks like our fingers really start back here. I guess they do, but these are the knuckles here, I think. A very cool drawing of a skeleton. These are called the, are these ones the ones that are called floating ribs down here? Sternum. Very well done. Good, good studies. Some people sitting around a fire. I think this person commented that they were trying to capture some sort of vibe or feeling. 
that they had experienced once. It looks like a it looks like a relaxing time. Like I want to be there. I want to go sit around a, a fire and chit chat with people. It's always a good time. I'm not really sure what's going on with their faces. Like what these segmented triangles are. I guess some way of trying to approximate what a face is, you know, with as few lines as possible, but I'm not really sure what which part is supposed to be which, which is okay. It doesn't, like I always say, it doesn't need to make sense. It's just the brain usually wants it to make sense. And so, like my mind is maybe lingering here trying to make it make sense more than it maybe the artist wants me to. I don't know. It's nice. It's an interesting style. Interesting. All right. It's like a, a take on Johnny Depp in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, huh? But it's like remixed a little bit. He's got different glasses, different hat, huh? Looks good, though. <laughs> it looks like some of the tobacco is falling out the end of his cigarette. <laughs> well, I think I'm done now. I usually, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many I did, but I think it was a lot. Thank you for everyone who submitted a drawing, or a painting, or a photograph, or a collage. You all, you're all amazing artists, and I hope you, I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings, or discourage anyone. That's the last thing I want to do. That's often why I hesitate to do these drawings, I mean these videos, is because I feel like I don't have the right words to say a lot of the time. And I don't want to make a video where I just say, it looks good, keep going, or something like that. But also, I think critiques can be useful. Um, but critiquing, like con constructive critique, which can sometimes involve saying things that seem negative, right? Thing, pointing out things you did wrong, but in a way that encourages people, that's a legitimate skill that has to be learned. I don't know if I'm the best person the best at that. I think a lot of the time the reason people submit their drawings to this is obviously just to, you know, so that I can see it uh, and so that they can be on YouTube and stuff, which is perfectly fine. But at the same time, I don't know, there's just like a lot of moving parts with a video like this. So anyways, thank, I thank all of you. You're all wonderful. Sorry if you submitted something and it didn't make it. Sorry if you didn't even know about it and you wanted to submit something. A lot of people are always asking about when's the next one going to be or I missed it and can I submit something another way? I'm sorry. I will always I will always have too many submissions to put in a video. Okay? So I apologize if you didn't make it. Um but uh I appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching. If you uh if you made it to the end of the video right now, if you're here, then the secret code word for making it to the end is you can just say, it's a Sharpie permanent marker. That's all you need to say in your comment. And then you and I and everyone else will know that you made it all the way here. I don't know how long this video is, but it's a Sharpie permanent marker. All right, we made it, guys. I'm going to go find something to eat now. And rest my throat. Sorry if this one wasn't quite as long as some of the others, but we'll do it again. Hopefully, it won't be quite as long between the videos, you know? This one was a long time between them. 
All right, I'm bad at saying goodbye in these videos. I'm bad at, I'm bad at ending it, you know. I'm bad, at, I'm bad at just stopping. When do you hit stop recording? It's hard to know. I'll do it right now.